Landmines continued to have a devastating effect on the countries in which they were once used as a tool of warfare. Even long after the battles were won and lost, these explosive devices remain buried beneath the ground where they indiscriminately destroy lives, killing and maiming innocent people who happen to stumble across them. According to the United Nations, up to 110 million mines have been laid across more than 70 countries since the 1960s and that between 15,000 and 20,000 people die each year because of them. Many of the victims are civilians, children, women and the elderly, not soldiers. Thousands more are maimed. Moreover, mines are cheap. The UN estimates that some cost as little as $3 to make and lay in the ground. Yet removing them can cost more than 50 times that amount. And the removal is not without human cost either. The UN says that one mine clearance specialist is killed and two injured for every 5,000 mines cleared. The UN standard is that demining groups have to prove that an area is 98% clear of mining fragments before they can move on. And today, a lot of research and attention has been going into solving this problem in the cheapest most efficient way and with the least number of casualties. That's a big task, so how do people do it? Probably the oldest and most remedial manner in which we locate landmines is through the use of metal detectors. The effectiveness varies according to the depth the landmine was buried at, what materials it is comprised of, and the type of soil. Most devices contain enough metal for metal detectors to pick up, but it's far from foolproof. Along with the dangers of accidentally stepping on a landmine, research shows that the most powerful and efficient metal detector was able to find 91% of landmines in clay soil, yet merely 71% of test mines were detected in iron-rich soil. That's a big variation. You also have to consider the fact that metal detectors will often detect metal which is not related to mines. This makes false positives relatively common, so metal detectors are hardly the most efficient use of time and energy. Aside from metal detectors, bomb-sniffing dogs and bomb-sniffing African pouched rats are also another low-tech way we've searched for landmines. Alternatively, one of the first devices used to detect and disarm landmines is something called a mine plow. It's essentially a rake-like device mounted on a tank that can clear any buried or concealed landmines the vehicle may encounter. Of course, there's always going to be a disadvantage of this technique. It requires a human operator, which means it's not the safest option. You also need a big tank, which not everyone has. That's where unmanned autonomous systems come in. And we're going to be looking at how an Afghan called Masoud Hassani made waves in the demining field in the early 20s. Tens. One of the worst affected countries is Afghanistan, with an estimated 10 million landmines contaminating more than 200 square miles of land. Masoud Hassani's family left Afghanistan in 1993, moving around different countries before eventually settling in the Netherlands. He eventually ended up at the Design Academy in Eindhoven. Whilst looking for ideas for his final project, one of his professors suggested he look to his Afghan roots for inspiration. Hassani says that he thought back to the desert north of Kabul, filled with landmines, and the small wind-powered toys that he and his brother used to skip across it. And that is how the mine Kafon was born. Hassani designed and built by hand a wind-powered ball that is heavy enough to trip mines as it rolls across the ground. Each $50 device looks like an artwork inspired by a starburst. In the middle of the Kafon is a 17 kilogram iron casing surrounded by dozens of radiating bamboo legs that each have a round plastic foot at their tip. Inside the ball is a GPS unit to map where it has been and in theory cleared of mines. All in all, it weighs a little more than 80 kilograms. The idea being that it is light enough to be pushed by the wind, but heavy enough to trip mines. You might think that the ball isn't durable enough to survive any explosion, but you'd be wrong. The idea is that at most, technicians would just have to make minor repairs, replacing the cost-effective bamboo legs. Its creator believes one ball may be able to endure as many as three landmine detonations before needing new legs. Although, of course, that depends on the firepower of each landmine. Simple, cheap, also oddly beautiful. The first two making it easily producible in poorer countries, which usually need it the most. As a result, you would think that the CAFON was a quick and easy win for the demining mission. But unfortunately, the tests did not draw the same conclusion. An analysis showed that if the idea is that the CAFON can hit a mine, survive the blast, and then continue to roll on and detonate other mines and eventually clear an area, then it will not work. As it stands, 100 grams of explosive, which is the average for anti-personal mines, stops the CAFON dead in its tracks right in the middle of a probable minefield, which would then make retrieval and repair very dangerous. There are also a couple of other drawbacks. First, First, you have to have wind blowing for the Kafon to move. And second, it will only work on fairly flat and open terrain like desert. It isn't designed to move in jungles. As well as this, when the Kafon is rolling, it could activate trip wires on fragmentation mines. If the mine explodes into fragments, it causes bigger problems because in subsequent sweeps, every fragment will be detected as a potential mine. In other words, more metal pieces mean more work for the human deminers who have to prove 98% clearance. Members of the demining community were skeptical about the mine Kafon's chances of ever 
never meeting the official international mine action standards. One key member commented that as much as he welcomed the new ideas, he thought that it was a nice concept with a great potential to raise awareness and perhaps inspire other solutions, but he couldn't see it meeting those standards in anything like its current form. A man called Komarowski, the head of the British Mines Advisory Group, believed that Hassani's creation was undermined by its dependence on the serendipity of random gusts, making it a haphazard option in a field traditionally characterized by highly methodical techniques. He also wasn't convinced that the device could be relied upon to necessarily detonate every mine it crossed, arguing that if a couple of its spikes are blown off during a clearance, then the holes in this structure could cause it to miss other mines as it rolls on. So not a resounding success for what seemed like a great idea on paper. But not all is lost. Hassani's mine cafon could have other uses. Instead of clearing fields of mines outright, that when you have an area of potential risk and you don't know if there are mines and people are afraid to go in, then you could use the cafon. And when you have a detonation, you then know that there are mines in that area because mines are never alone. In recent years, Hassani has moved forward with drone technology. The Mine Cafon drone, or MKD, is a drone that can not only detect the landmines, but can also detonate them. The drone is equipped with six rotors and various attachments, one of which maps the area, while the other, a metal detector attachment, detects the mines themselves. Once they're marked by GPS, the drone goes back to the operator and they switch out the metal detector for a robotic arm. It, in turn, drops detonators the size of tennis balls over the explosive device, causing the landmine to explode safely, with no danger to humans. A Kickstarter campaign was created to improve the design of the drone, and it raised more than $214,000 out of its initial 85,000 goal. Hassani's team hopes to completely eliminate all landmines using this system in less than 10 years, which is a very lofty goal considering it would take an estimated 1,100 years to get rid of all active landmines at the current rate of removal, and at a cost of between 50 and 100 billion dollars. While the mine cafon will not be the invention that ends the problem of landmines, its value as a symbol of innovation is precious in itself. The approach of creating cheap, mass-producible solutions is vital in a world where many of the countries worst affected by mines can't afford high-tech, high-cost methods. Landmines are a uniquely cruel invention, which unlike bullets, blight the land they are buried in long after after the fighting has ended, killing and maiming like some vengeful spirit reminding everyone how bad war really is. It's a very gloomy thought to think that humans can be so creative in the ways that they can cause harm to others. But people like Masood Hassani show us that inventing can go both ways. And it only takes the dreams of those who wish for a better, safer world for real changes to happen. Hi there, thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video, much appreciated. My name's Henry and I'm running a channel about disaster management and humanitarian emergencies. I'm trying to show people how the field of disaster management is a really cool and exciting thing. If you like the video, give it a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content. Thank you for watching and take care.